Tuesday, May 4th, 2021, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Uh, today, we're going to look at uh, why it looks like Silver Squeeze is working, uh, the move uh, to uh, get into physical silver away from synthetic or paper silver ETFs is working. Uh, we need to keep uh, informing people, uh, informing the public that if they really want to own silver, it has to be physical. It has to be uh, coins and bars. Really, uh, there shouldn't be any reason for people not to buy physical if they want to get into uh, silver and gold for that matter as well. Gold is the same because as we know, the bankers, they use these synthetic or paper instruments to control the market. So yeah, if we look at the uh, daily chart here of silver, uh, let's see, it goes back to uh, August last year. As you can see, we've been, been in a range basically between 23 and uh, 30. And uh, yeah, look at the jump yesterday in the price of silver. Uh, early on on Sunday night and yesterday early in the morning, uh, London, silver wasn't doing much. I wasn't expecting a, a, a big move in silver. I thought the, these banks still have a lot of firepower. So I was surprised that we moved up a, a dollar. It, we were up like 3%. We almost got uh, up to 27. So I think it shows that uh, it's only beginning and that we can make a difference. So we just have to keep going and keep informing the public about it. This is a, a long-term financial war. I think we won this battle here because the bullion banks had to cover. And that's what uh, this price move is showing. Uh, what about gold? Uh, gold is the same thing. Of course, uh, silver is getting a lot more attention. Silver is easier to buy. Uh, for the small investor uh, because it's cheaper, right? You, you can buy one of these uh, for 30 pounds or $35, $40, even though the price, the spot price or the paper price is a lot lower. Gold, it, it takes a couple of thousand dollars to buy an ounce. There are other ways of buying gold, of course. I have uh, my referral or reference uh, with uh, Glint uh, Pay. Uh, what, what is Glint Pay? Well, they store your gold in Switzerland and give you a, a MasterCard where you can spend the fiat currency that you put, put with them or the gold that you buy with them. It's held for you in an allocated account. Yes, I'm sure a lot of people will want the physical gold, but there are some people who like the convenience of Glint. Uh, the other thing they have is a function called Glintit, where you can actually send uh, gold, as little as a gram or even less than a gram, uh, like you send a text to someone else. Of course, that person has to have an account with Glint. So it's like peer to peer. I don't think it's working in the U US yet because of regulatory reasons, uh, the Glinted uh, function. But everywhere else around the world in the UK and Europe, it is. And, and of course, if you're looking to buy physical uh, gold and silver in the UK. Uh, I, I'd shop around, but I also have my promo code Monaco64 with gold investments. And uh, yes, I've dealt, dealt with them, as I've said before, for almost 20 years. Family run business, very reputable. So the picture for gold. Um, yeah, uh, this 1800 level, and, and it's actually around 1798, 1800. Yes, it's a round number. <laughs> uh, and you might say, oh, that's the only reason why is it, it's a resistance. We, we've tried a couple of times, uh, as you can see here in the weekly chart. Uh, I think the, the week before last, we tried to get up there and it failed. And yesterday, uh, we got up to almost uh, 1800 and we've come back down this morning. We're going to look at the markets where they are. But if you look here, uh, back in... Uh, let's say July last year, end of July last year, when we broke through that 1800 level, look at what the market did. It, it went almost straight up 
to 2100 in a matter of weeks. And now I'm going to go to the monthly chart to show you why that level is so important. If you go back to uh, the all time high back in uh, August of 2011 at 1920 or thereabouts, once the market topped there, we, we had a, a, a few uh, tries of getting back above 1800, as you can see, uh, back in February of 2012, uh, back in uh, actually November of 2011, uh, February 20. 12 and then we tried again in September of 2012 and then October 2012 it, it failed that 1800 level and that's why it's so important you might say why do people care about these levels well because that's the way markets work people markets have long memories and they know the levels so back in like uh, I think 2004 five or six the, the level to, to watch was 400 gold. Uh, that was kind of the equivalent to 1800. Once it got above four, 400, uh, gold eventually went up to 1000 very uh, relatively quickly. So I, I think uh, we need to keep an eye on this. I think it looks very good as you can see on the monthly chart. Um, but of course we need to be, break 1800 and uh, the bankers are going to make it very hard uh, for that level to break. But once it breaks, it could be today, it could be tomorrow, or it could be next week. Uh, there will be loads of uh, people buying on stop, uh, people who've been short uh, for for years. And that's usually the bullion banks. And uh, they'll, they'll have to buy back their shorts and they might even go long and that's why it, the the price will accelerate in my opinion having uh traded uh, in these markets for over 20 years uh, i know how these levels work and and i think uh 1800 is very important silver i, I think 27 as well is an important level even though the 30 level really is the key level and we're still pretty far away from that level but if you look at uh, this chart here, uh, there isn't much activity above 27 in the last uh, months or so. That's why they, they're they trying to defend that 27 as well, in my opinion. So before we look at the markets, just uh, note a few things, a story I saw this morning about uh, US banks having to ask their corporate clients, especially banks like JP Morgan and Citigroup, they're asking big corporate clients uh, not to deposit cash with them. <laughs> and why is that? Why would a bank want not want cash, not want cash from, from clients? Well, because of this SLR exemption that wasn't extended at the end of uh, March this year. Um, and uh, these banks have had to take a lot of cash because of the pandemic and it screws up their regulatory capital requirements uh, because it, it becomes uh, it, when they take clients cash it becomes a liability. They have to have more capital and, and then they also have to uh, do the uh, buy treasuries from the QE program. So they're, they're pushing clients to, to put their uh, cash into uh, money market funds and other things. And it's still a problem. It's still a big problem. Uh, is it possible that clients are going to start moving cash into physical gold and silver corporate clients? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, it's a very interesting situation. And uh, the, the big banks and their uh, financial uh, officers don't expect things to change. Uh, but uh, why, why am I covering this? Well, because I think with Basel III and uh, with the changes coming in June about gold becoming uh, a risk-free uh, credit-rated asset, it could change things for the bank's balance sheets. Who knows? We'll have to, to keep an eye on it. So right now, uh, it looks like JP Morgan and Citi and other big, big banks are pushing their clients to put cash with money market funds that uh, that they actually uh, run uh, but uh, is not counted in the regulatory scheme of things and I don't think QE is gonna be able to uh, be 
uh, stopped anytime soon, even though I see the Bank of Canada has tapered from four billion a week to three billion, but they're still buying uh, securities. I see the Bank of England is gonna have to maybe think about tapering in September this year when their QE program ends. But as I've said, uh, it's gonna be very hard unless they wanna create a huge crisis to unwind their balance sheet. I think this is gonna continue and continue. So it bears watching uh, in June when the Basel III uh, rules come into effect uh, for the tier one uh, capital, uh, gold will become uh, credit. Uh, on the credit side, there will be 0% risk. Of course, on the market side, there is risk when the price goes up and down, just like there's risk for other foreign currencies versus uh, domestic currency. So with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. As usual, it's around uh, 8.30 uh, a.m. London time. We've got spot gold down six and a half dollars. Yes, <laughs> I, I thought gold might be uh, above 1800 this morning, but um, it's not. <laughs> we got up to uh, 1794 overnight. So we're, we're at uh, 1786. The, the low has been 1783.70. So uh, looks like a normal market reaction, taking a little bit of a, a rest. And I know the gold and silver paper markets are not that normal, but uh, in the scheme of things, silver, all things considered, still doing relatively well. We're at 26.80, down about eight cents or a third of a percent. The high has been 26.98 and the low 26.67. But considering yesterday we we were trading as low as twenty five seventy eight, I think uh, it, it's uh, up a dollar from when I spoke uh, early yesterday. Uh, the Dow futures down twenty points. Uh, Nasdaq one hundred future down forty. S and P five hundred future down seven. Uh, cable uh, British pound is down 0.4 of a percent. Uh, at 138.55, so the dollar is fairly strong this morning because the euro is down also 0.4 at 120.17. <laughs> it's down exactly the same amount as as the uh, the pound. So it just goes to show you how managed these major currencies are. Uh, I bet you the BIS and the central banks are involved in this. Um, the dollar uh, is up almost the same amount against the yen in percentage terms at 109.45 dollars up slightly uh, versus the u1 uh, around 648 high grade copper down 0.4 of a percent at 450 uh, crude is unchanged at 6440 that's wti crude of course and the 10-year yield right now is at uh 162 up one basis point so a bond market is very quiet right now so if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit uh, the like button please share it far and wide think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet make sure you hit also that little notification bell to be notified of all my new videos and you can also follow me on facebook twitter and all these other platforms below here i wish you all a great day take care Bye.